Yeah. I'm fine, thanks. Thank you very much for having us here in Barcelona, first of all. Uh, we're here for the first test drive of the new Volvo XC60. Sure, it's good to be here, Javier. Thank you very much. And I understand you're in charge of the amazing safety technology in these cars. Volvo has always been known for that. That's but correct. this is obviously being the newest model, must have the latest technology, right? That's correct, yeah, the XC60. It's uh, uh, our latest product out on the scalable product uh, architecture, uh, following the footsteps of XC90, S90, V90. So it's got uh, uh, the base of all those uh, tech uh, systems in the XC62. Plus, we've raised the bar a little bit on our uh, uh, collision avoidance uh, city safety support, also on uh, uh, lane uh, mitigation for oncoming vehicles as well and then we have an uh, option of uh, bliss uh, steering support as well so yeah we're raising the bar continuously and there's are three examples of new systems coming those three are new that's, for this one it's never been in any other model that's right we've been developing them and they're developed on time for the launch of the xc60 and of course we're going to be taking those uh, new uh, technologies and, and putting them uh, backward updates into our existing 90 cars. and that's the great thing about newer technology that you can just go back and like uh, update update the, the, the cars right so Let's go for a little drive and first of all, I mean with all the latest Volvos and I have this here for a reason yeah. They have this little cloth uh, in the glove uh, compartment and sure. this is like one of the many examples of attention to detail and this is to clean the, the screen, right? The screen there in front of us for the infotainment system That's, that's, a, that's I mean, you probably didn't need to do this but this is such a nice touch that you can have this that's and that's why I pull it out because I want to mention how you guys have been doing, I mean every little detail it seems like everything the smallest thing even down to the little flag of the proud yeah I'm glad, flag. I'm glad yeah. you like it as well well yeah we put a lot of attention into our interior design and it's great that you're uh, pointing out these uh, nice features as well so we're gonna put this uh, back in sure. and then the other thing is like the elegant way to start the car you it's like a that. turn of that knob and it's like almost like a piece of jewelry yeah yeah it's nice, but yeah, as I say, a lot of attention and detail has been put into our interior systems and the, the driver interface as well. You can actually find there's an option as far as a Swedish crystal glass gear stick top as well. Oh, okay. Well, isn't that with the T8 only? That, I think you're yeah, absolutely right on the T8 only, yeah. We, yeah we well, first, that, I, first introduced on the XC90 coming in the yeah. T8 also. On the so technology um, obviously advances really fast and must be very challenging for, for you guys. But also, uh, I think uh, Volvo is uh, one of the best examples of integrating technology in a very elegant way because some other manufacturers put things kind of in a way they put like screens in top of the of the grill. But you guys have been like uh, done an, a great job, I think, of putting you. together the technology and the design. Yeah, it's very important for us. I think we we are a very much a human centric uh, company. We've got a lot of attention to detail as far as interaction with the driver and our systems. My background from safety, you know, we are very interested in the, the, the design and the infotainment software development guys. They they are doing things the way which is is is. Uh, good ergonomic interface with the driver as well. So we're gonna go for a little drive around here at the airport uh, in Barcelona and uh, we will try some of the systems obviously not all of them because for example the pilot assist has to be at a certain speed right? Yes the, the pilot assist will kick in um, around uh, well, it's 35 or something? Well, well pilot assist will work up to 130 uh, kilometers or up to, 100, up to 85 uh, so 81 miles per hour is what it can Oh, okay. Hour, yeah. Well, there it is now, for example. Yeah, you've got the green... Uh, the green... Uh, uh, steering wheel. Steering wheel and the thing. And there you go. It's hard to see in camera, but the, the car is actually guiding me in the steering wheel to it follow the, the, right. the path, so right? You can see in front of us there uh, that we've got clear uh, lane markings, which the, uh, the, the, the cameras are using to follow. And then uh, we can set with uh, the pilot assist uh, function the speed that we want the car to be uh, driving at as well because the system will work without a vehicle in front of us as well. 
part of the, the system is we can set uh, the time gap to any vehicle that could be in front of us to give us a, a safety margin so the vehicle will then break too. But without a vehicle in front of us, we can use the speed, yeah. speed to set that time. Now you can see that the, the grey steering wheel has been uh, uh, switched off down to a grey one. So That's one. because I turn on the, the turn signal? Exactly, to steer into another lane. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. And you're doing it again, so it's been going from green to grey as well. So once you then find yourself in the new lane, then you see the green steering it came back on, on, yeah. Automatically, yeah. So, uh, can you please explain uh, to our audience, uh, we're in the level two of autonomous driving with this technology, right? Exactly. So this is, uh, by definition, then a semi-autonomous vehicle, which means that it's the driver you have here that has responsibility for the control of the vehicle. Now what we're seeing here, because it's level 2, because it's semi-autonomous drive, because the driver has responsibility, that you have to be driver in the loop, actively engaged in our driving. That means hands on wheel and with your eyes on the road and with your mind on the driving. Because at the end of it, it's semi-autonomous. Here's an example, I'm sorry for the interruption, sure. but that was a perfect example of the Bliss uh, assist, right? I mean, the car detected, this car came up pretty fast on the yeah. blind side, yeah. and like it, it helped me. Uh, yeah, we were, we were talking, now we're driving and talking at the time, and there's a lot going on for you, Javi, and as you described, the car came up on the blind side. On the wing mirror, there was a red light flashing, yeah. Bliss functionality. To and it caught my attention, actually it did. It did, so you knew it was coming. We were, we were still in lane, so there was no issue, but the, th but the system told you that that car was coming. I'm sorry again, I interrupted you in the description of level 2 of autonomous driving. I'm in, in, in charge of it, and I understand that, uh, I mean, it already has a lot of systems that can probably, if you're on a highway yeah. for three hours, it can go pretty much on its own. What? Well, for three hours, well, um, I, the system is developed then for use as it is today then on the highways. Uh, where we have clearly Clear, marked yeah. uh, lines, and, and in particular, it would be useful for like traffic jam scenarios. For example, California, where you have you know lots of traffic jams during rush hour, or alternatively, uh, you know straight highways. I can imagine driving through the Midwest, through Kansas, long straight roads. Yeah. yeah with the, the roads are very very straight, little cur curvature. That that's where the system would be you know, is, is is developed for and will work very very well. And uh, you are. Uh in, in the in the process of the development and all that, you are bypassing level three, or that's well, uh, we we have a strategy then. Uh, that's um, today we have our systems as we talked about at level level two. Our strategy then along for our journey to develop systems for fully autonomous uh, drive vehicles to go straight to level four, and that's at level four by definition the the, the, the car car manufacturer has responsibility for control of yeah. the car. Now what's in the middle is level three and there we see the handover situations where we see there's, there's issues and difficulties in defining who has the responsibility in those handover situations yeah. from the driver to the vehicle and we think that uh, adds complexity in very difficult situations to be able to clearly define that responsibility and that's why our strategy is to go straight to level four and we're developing systems research work which will aid us on that journey to develop systems to straight to level four. And um, I understand that this summer you're already testing some of that uh, uh, autonomous driving technologies in Sweden, right? That's correct. We have uh, the Drive Me project which has already started. The first family has been uh, selected. The Hain family as was announced mm -hmm. recently by, by Volvo. Uh, project is for driving cars and 100, 100 families that will be driving our Drive Me vehicles in Gothenburg. It's a project which is a joint venture together with the local authorities as well so that they are on board uh, together with uh, uh, Altareve too and some other partners. Um, and this project is a research project which will help us to understand driver interaction with the vehicle and will give us very very important data to help us to develop these systems on our journey towards level four. And that's also um, working in coordination with the city, right? Because for a fully autonomous driving environment, you need the infrastructure to have some equipment to. That's exactly correct. So so um, we, we have to have the roads which are, are uh, available and that, that can work along with level four uh, vehicles too. So yes, it's a lot to do with the, the, the 
joint venture with the local authorities are on board as well. This also uh, combines uh, on your vision of the 2020 vision. Uh, can you add on a little bit on that? That's correct, yeah. So we have um, our, our safety vision uh, 2020, which uh, states that uh, at Volvo uh, we will be developing vehicles such that by the year 2020, our new vehicles, nobody will be killed or seriously injured in a new Volvo by the year 2020. Something that which we've been working with uh, is part of our working process uh, uh, within Volvo and within the Volvo Car Safety Centre for many, many years. The, 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 the basis of this, as I said, is, is human-centric. It's to do with, uh, we've been collecting crash data from, from accidents in the field mm -hmm. since the 1960s. So we, we, we can see the progress and the advance in our uh, uh, safety systems within our vehicles, reducing uh, serious injuries through the decades, uh, through the generations of almost up until today. Uh, now our new products uh, on this uh, uh, scale, scale of product uh, architecture, uh, the first vehicle out was XC90 and then S90, V90. These are, are relatively new pro products which haven't been in the field that long which means that we don't have a lot of data, lot on those, of data yeah. which is statistically significant to see, okay, well, how are we actually doing? But what we do know, what we do know, of course, we, we are robustly verifying uh, these vehicles in our own crash labs. So we know from our own testing experience, we know from our own simulations that uh, these vehicles are performing very, very well relative to our older generation of vehicles. And on top of that as well, of course, don't just take don't just take my word for that. We have rating institutes. I was going to say because in the European uh, safety uh, test, uh, Volvo cars has been number one for several years now, right? That, that's right. Yeah. So your NCAP in particular, and these guys, you know, the the uh, their safety protocols. They've been they've been raising the bar uh, consistently, and in the, in the latest uh, testing. The three vehicles which have performed the best ever, they're all Volvos, uh, and those are the XC90, S90, V90. So, so not only do we know from our own internal testing that our latest products are better than our older ones, of course, uh, we have that confirmation from external institutes as well that you know these cars are best ever. So we're, we're really doing what we can to be following our path towards that Zero Vision 2020. Amazing work and an amazing final product, and I'm sure this car is already the most popular uh, for sales in terms of sales for Volvo, so that's correct. I mean, the, with the, all this uh, beautiful design, beautiful uh, combination of the powertrain, which by the way is the same one as the XC90, which is also really great in exactly. terms of uh, performance. Exactly. Exactly. And this technology, I'm sure you gonna <laughs> keep getting a lot of good news. So, well, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, very, Javier. Very interesting uh, conversation uh, while driving. Great. And um, again, we didn't have the chance uh, to test every single system but there's like a lot of technology that people are going to be really impressed with yeah i'm sure they will great thank you very much nice to talk to you thank you okay